Okay, great. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, let me also thank the organizers of the Zeta Alpha team for organizing this session. It is actually very great that we are talking an entire afternoon about Transformers with, with a big room here at Science Park. This is a great achievement. Uh, great that we have this ecosystem, so thanks a lot for organizing. Um, I'm going to talk about computer vision transformers. Can I just use the... Um, so, hundreds of millions of years ago, uh, the, 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 the soup of life uh, contained only a few species, like jellyfish, sponges and, and worms. And in some mysterious way, probably because light finally approached the earth, uh, eyes started to develop. So animals were equipped with the, the gift of sight, and because of this they developed all kinds of uh, camouflage and, and armors, uh, because all of a sudden they could be found and be eaten, right? So it was a sort of like survival skill to, to diversify. Um, at some point uh, humans also uh, evolved, and also our site is actually pretty, uh, pretty well uh, developed. So this is the outline of uh, actually a macaque brain, which is very close to our uh, brain. And it shows that all the areas that are involved with, with vision and about 50% of our brain activity actually works on seeing. So this is actually quite a, quite a lot of uh, brain capacity that we spent on, 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 on site. Uh, and this famous uh, cognitive scientist von Essen uh, uh, published this, this blueprint of, of the brain and how the modules interact uh, in our brain, how, how we see. Uh, and much is still not 100% uh, clear, but this is sort of nice because it sort of resembles a neural network architecture with feed forward and feed backward uh, uh, processes. The human invention of written language is of a much more recent uh, date. So it uh, most likely started somewhere in what is now known as uh, Iraq and then spread over uh, the big civilizations of, uh, of the time, but it's, it started around 3500 before Christ. Um, so this is of much more recent uh, descent. And now if we fast forward to the latest and greatest uh, human invention, that is of course uh, uh, deep learning, um, um, this is all about, used to be all about MLPs, convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Uh, I think even the word transformer is not mentioned at all in this, in this nature overview paper by uh, uh, Lacoon, Benjo and, Hin and Hinton. Um, but what happened next was, um, was this paper, so, uh, which is essentially a language uh, transformer because this paper uh, was originally intended or at least demonstrated on a machine translation uh, problem through translating one language to another and demonstrating uh, the amazing effectiveness of this self-attention uh, mechanism. Um, and well the biggest takeaway is that attention is enough, right? You don't need uh, convolutions and recurrence, this attention structure is is really all you need, so the title is also brilliant. Uh, I checked yesterday evening, more than 50,000 citations. This is sort of like more than uh, the average professor will not even reach in his career, right? So this is uh, quite amazing. So this is really impact. It is also interesting that for the first time, I think in a long time, that computer vision starts to follow NLP. It used to be the other way around, so we have to get used to this new status quo. Um, but it's, it, it's fascinating because an innovation in NLP is now starting to drive innovations also in, in, in vision because we're all starting to speak the same, same language. That, that, that's good development. Um, so what people did, they created a vision uh, transformer uh, after this success of um, uh, the language transformer, so to say. Um, and what was now the main trick of this paper? Well, the, the difficulty was, what is the token in, 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 in vision, right? So in language it's easy, you have the word or the characters, but in, what is it in vision? And essentially the main contribution of this paper is to say, look, uh, a token is a 16 by 16 patch that we just sort of like define on a grid on, on, on the image. 
Um, and they showed uh, in this work, well, they get a good speed accuracy trade-off if you do it this way. And if you feed this vision transformer enough data, you can be competitive with, with uh, convolutional neural networks. And convolutional neural network was sort of like the holy grail in, in computer vision, so they needed to convince the community that convolutional neural networks could be beaten, right? So that's what they, they demonstrated this. It, it, it's feasible. Uh, one limitation, it could only do one vision task, and that is uh, image net classification, like bird, dog, flamingo, or what have we. Uh, this is the model overview, so it pretty much resembles the language uh, transformer. Um, so what you see here is that you have these patches they, they put into uh, a projection layer. And then what is different from the, uh, from the normal transformer is that they had this class token uh, in, in front and some positional embedding. And then they could do classification. So all the rest is pretty, pretty much similar to the language transformer. Nothing special. But vision is not the same as language, right? So this has developed over millions of years, so we have all kinds of inductive biases hardwired in our brain, and why are we not using them also in this uh, attention or uh, architecture, transformer architecture? So this is a picture from uh, the Swin transformer uh, 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 folks, and they show, look, there are multi-scale and locality, locality and translation invariants are notions in vision that are not well captured in, in language. And we need to put those inductive biases into our models uh, to get benefits of faster convergence, less data, and so on. Uh, so I'm glad that Auke already sort of like highlighted this. So I'll go over it quickly. So the key idea of the Swin transformer is not to compute the attention over the entire image, but to use local areas in your uh, image and to do it also in a hierarchical way so that you can also assure that you have um, attention across regions. Uh, and this rightfully so uh, received the best paper award at ICV 2021. So here you see the different layers to make sure that you can also get attention across uh, areas. Uh, this is what it looked like, not so interesting, but also basically very much resembles the standard architecture. Um, well, th this helps in getting a best paper. They, they demonstrated that you can basically use the, the feature representation that they, they obtained, and they also did it for classification. So they get best result on image net classification, but they also demonstrate that if you put these features, that these, these backbone features into common detection and segmentation frameworks, you would also get state-of-the-art. So all of a sudden, this transformer-based feature that was demonstrated to be very powerful also for vision. Still limitation, it's a solid backbone, but the detection and segmentation architectures are still sort of transformer agnostic. They are still based on the traditional way of, of, of doing things. Then there is Detter, and Detter was the first object uh, detection uh, transformer architecture. And this was uh, very nice because basically they they perceived object detection as a set prediction problem, and they used the transformer to get uh, to get to these uh, set predictions. What is nice also that by using the transformer here, uh, they don't no longer needed many uh, sort of like uh, ad hoc steps that are common in object detectors in computer vision, like uh, non-maximum suppression and, and anchors and predefines and these kind of things. So this was, I think, uh, a very nice uh, a very nice paper that appeared at ECV in 2020. Um, a year later, a follow-up, an iClear. I think this is a good improvement over, over the debtor, and they, uh, they called it deformable uh, debtor. Um, why does it add? It adds the multi-scale variant. That was an important uh, contribution to make it more suited for, for vision. So it's essentially an inductive bias for vision. And because of that, it resulted in faster convergence and better results. So good improvement. Uh, but we still found uh, a limitation, and, and that I'm finally going to talk about our own work, um, is that um, the existing detector transformers still ignore the inherent regularities in the, in the, visual, uh, in the visual image, in the visual modality. And these image features are vectorized in exactly the same way as language tokens, which is weird, right? So that was the, the starting point for, for what we call the boxer and, and, and box attention. Uh, so let me explain that. 
So um, we were also motivated by the success of sliding window in modern detectors, and this is sort of like a very traditional way of doing things in an image. Basically, you, you start in an image, you slide over it, and you try to detect what, what is happening in, in there. Uh, and this grid structure is sort of also an inductive bias that we, that we, uh, that we exploit, this 2D inductive bias. So this is the notion of, of box attention, so it differs from the, uh, from the fact of regular attention that you assign to each query vector now a reference window. That is the main, the main idea. Then you have as a key, you have the learnable vector of relative positions, and the value vectors are sampled from, from the window. So if you take that into uh, the attention computation, then you see that it as follows. So we have the query, and we have the value and, and the key, and then with the softmax we get the, uh, the values we need. Um, but there is more. We also add what we call a where to attend uh, module, and this module learns specific transformations that are very relevant in the visual world, uh, namely translation uh, and scaling. And how you can see this is, for example, here you have the query on, on the left and the reference window on the top right, and then with these transformation functions, you can basically fit this reference window to an object uh, of interest, so that you get a better alignment with the things you're interested in. Um, you can also ex extend this with uh, instance attention, and then you're no longer restricted to a box world, but you can also do segmentation uh, masks, all in the same module. It is naturally combined with uh, multi-scale, so this is also useful because sometimes the reference window doesn't only s aligns with the head and only with this one, it aligns with the complete uh, object. So this is what uh, the boxer, how it behaves in, two, in 2D. Uh, so what is interesting that already after the encoder, we end up with what we call an object proposal that is pretty pretty much similar to the end result that we, we need. So already the encoder captures very well uh, the objects of interest. Um, well, here are some results. There's a lot of numbers. I tried to group them a little bit. So the, the, the first set of uh, rows is basically state-of-the-art ConvNet uh, ways of doing object detection. Uh, the middle is uh, transformer-based alternatives. And the bottom one is our, our boxer for two, for 2D. And um, what is interesting here is that we, get, we are better independent of the metric. We are two AP points better than uh, anybody else. So this is uh, envisioned and you, you start to celebrate because that means you have a paper, essentially. <laughs> right? It's the Uh, and the same for segmentation. So also here, we, we so the typical competitor is the mask uh, RCNN uh, architecture is uh, super, super, super good. Um, and with the transformer, there are some uh, some improvements. But also again, our Boxer 2D uh, can do can do that uh, uh, even slightly better. Now here are some success cases. Uh, so even uh, tiny objects and persons, it's all pretty good. You have probably seen this before, so not so interesting. Uh, failure cases. I, I love failure cases. So uh, small objects in low light conditions that are on the left are really still really hard, and also we miss many pigeons uh, in the middle. Um, this one looks pretty good in terms of the segmentation mask, but the classification label is off, so the, the person is categorized as a bat. So, so it also still makes label, labeling mistakes. Um, so the, the, the word's never finished. Uh, what is nice is that this same architecture can also be easily uh, used for 3D object detection. So that's what we also did. And then all what you need to add is an additional transformation function that also covers rotation. right? And here we show uh, LiDAR range images. So we have here again the reference window. And now we can, because we can also rotate, we can better capture objects in 3D. So this is, a, I think, a cool benefit of the approach. Um, yeah, and then with the multiple heads, you can capture uh, different angles of an object. Um, 
here are some results. So I think this is this is nice. Uh, for this topic, we do not beat the ConvNet approaches yet. Uh, the reason being they are over-optimized on this problem and we just did it out of the box on, on this approach. Uh, we are competitive for the vehicle, but for the pedestrian, we are a bit behind. Uh, but if we also sort of like take an out of the box deformable debtor, which is sort of like the, the predecessor of the box, you could say, uh, then we are really much, uh, much better. So that, I think, was the encouraging result uh, here. The transformers also for this problem are very suitable. Um, here are some, uh, some results. So the blue boxes are manually labeled ground truth. Uh, in uh, green, you see the predict predicted vehicles, and in red, predicted pedestrians. And what you can see, if you look carefully, is that we find most of the vehicles. We even find some vehicles that are not in the ground truth, but we miss quite a few uh, pedestrians. So the pedestrians are still still hard. Um, it's a very powerful approach. We also have a, another paper called uh, Tuber, and this is a transformer for video action detection. So in addition to having uh, a 2D object detection, this one really tries to find a tube throughout a video, and that is also using the inductive biases that come uh, that come with video. I think that the takeaway message of, of my talk, uh, which ends almost, is that vision is not the same as, uh, as language, so it is tempting to use the same hammer also for, that works for uh, language also for vision, but if you are smart about the inductive biases that we know uh, that, that we are exploiting in, in our brain to also include them in your algorithms, you can have quite a few uh, benefits. And I think we have not really explored everything there is there. Um, if you are interested in the topic of vision transformers, I can highly recommend uh, this survey paper by colleagues uh, of mine. Um, so I found this very insightful and has a great, great list of, of resources uh, on what people have been doing uh, for transformers in, in computer vision. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much. Do you have questions? I see some hands. Thank you, very inspiring. Um, I have a question on multimodal. Uh, so I saw the examples in books uh, 2D and 3D. Uh, did you combine them, so the RGB data and the depth data? Uh, uh, no, we haven't. We, I get this question very often, but we haven't done that yet. No, no. That's, that's, uh, it, 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 but it's, it's on our wish list, yes. All right, see other hands? So thanks a lot for the talk. And uh, my, my background is NLP, so I apologize if my question sounds dumb. So in NLP before transformers, we used like um, uh, models that were like heavily relied on inductive biases. Like we had like syntax aver um, encoders like LSTM that look like like dependency parsing. And then with the um, invention of like transformers, we moved away from them. And then we tried to encode linguistic knowledge in a loss, like in a, in a, in a task that we are solving. So do you think it's something that uh, maybe the vision can also experiment with, like instead of trying to changing the architecture, actually trying to define tasks that the, that the model will be required to learn, like, I don't know, the aspects that you're interested, like translation or scale or angle from, from those tasks, not from the changing of the architecture. So thanks a lot. Well, uh, NLP is now an area of uh, inspiration uh, for us, so you are still ahead. Uh, so everything uh, you've been doing, we 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 are looking at it. Uh, so so we're not there yet. Maybe we get there next year. That could could, could very well be. So so likely is my answer. Other questions? If I remember correctly, the data paper. Um, the original model made more mistakes on small objects than CNN. Has this evolved with uh, deformable data and your uh, model? Uh, I, I think we, we do evaluate the for the smaller IP. I can have a look for you. Uh, if it, can we go back? Uh, one more, one more, one more, one more. This uh, one more. This one, yeah. So the the small AP is this one. 
Uh, so, well, we, we are bold, so bold is good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, deformable debtor, if you look at the R101, it's, it's about the same as, as the Covnets, and, and we are slightly better. So I think being having this box notion is also beneficial for tiny yeah, and small. Yeah. Um, is it also possible that it's dangerous to add computer vision, indu computer vision inductive biases to transformers? Because transformers didn't have computer vision inductive bias, but it was all also working good. So maybe another approach should be getting something that has no inductive bias in computer vision, but put more data, and it actually works better on computer vision problems. Yeah. yeah so I'm I'm a poor university professor, so I have limited uh, computational uh, resources. So putting inductive biases in is uh, also has computational advantages. Uh, our our colleagues at uh, Google uh, ha have shown that if you put in enough uh, scale, you will always do better on whatever uh, you come up with. Uh, but I still believe that, that these inductive biases have, have value. I think, I mean, uh, I buy it immediately that scale helps. Uh, but we also, we, we, I mean, we also have, a, we have to save the planet and, and, and reduce the energy. So maybe inductive biases are the way to go uh, uh, there. Yeah. All right, one last question. Yeah, you st yeah, here. You started to talk with uh, like 50% of the brain capacity is used for vision, and less probably for language. So is vision harder than NLP? <laughs> uh, I think so, to be honest. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 